All right, anybody have any homework questions? Yes. Yeah. Uh, did I assign that one bicycle wheel? Okay. Well, yes, let's go through that. Um, so let's talk about rolling without slipping. I'm going to go through a little spiel that would have helped you with that problem. That's rolling, you know, like, otherwise, if it slips, it's not really rolling, it's slipping. What? Yeah, right. <laughs> um, I'm going to derive these formulas, but then you can just use the formulas. But here's the one caveat. Okay, so I'm going to derive this. You don't have to derive it on tests, but I'm not going to. This is one pair of formulas I'm not going to give you because if because I figure you it's not that bad to derive it if you have to, you know. Okay, so um, there's a disk, uh, and it's we're going to assume that it has uh, counterclockwise um, angular velocity omega and a counterclockwise angular acceleration alpha. Uh, that just means if it's if either of those is clockwise, it's negative. Um, and we're going to use a coordinate system with x that way, y that way. Then z would be coming out of the page. Um, and the three. Uh, I guess let's just think of it as so this thing is round uh, and the two defining facts about rolling without slipping First, um, so if this is the center of the wheel, the disc, um, the contact point here we'll call P. Um, so first of all, the velocity of that point P on the wheel has to be equal to zero. Uh, that point that's in contact with the ground um, If it's moving and it's in contact with the ground that's not moving, then it's slipping. That's like the definition of slipping. And similarly, um, the acceleration of that point P, now here we have to be a little bit careful. Uh, this is this point, if you're traveling along with the wheel, you'd see this point moving, I guess, this way. Uh, in circular motion, which means it has to have centripetal acceleration, okay? So we're not going to say that the acceleration of that point is zero, but it would be slipping if uh, the part of the acceleration parallel to the 
surface was non-zero, okay? So first, you know, just make sure that it makes sense to you that requiring the velocity to be zero and requiring the side to side, um, you know, the parallel part of the acceleration has to be equal to zero, okay? So, so by this I mean parallel to the surface. And you can just think of this as that's what it means to not slip. And we're going to derive uh, information about the velocity of C. and the acceleration of C, okay? Um, okay, so first let's calculate the velocity of C. And uh, I'm gonna set this up as uh, the velocity of P relative to the ground. And when I say, when I just say the velocity of C and the acceleration of C, if I don't make any distinction, we're talking about as observed on the ground, right? It's, um, like, if you... Like if you see a bike go by and you're like, how fast is that bike going? And, and your friend is like, it's going zero meters per second because my uh, frame of reference is sitting on the bicycle. That's, that's an asshole comment. <laughs> that doesn't contribute anything to the discussion. So we're looking for uh, VC relative to ground. <clears throat> Oh God! You guys would just have such a nice laugh together, and then he'd probably just give you a warning and send you on your way. <laughs> I would, if you do that, will you uh, will you videotape it? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Okay, so. Velocity of P relative to the ground is equal to velocity of P relative to the center plus velocity of the center relative to the ground. And this is the one we want. Uh, so what do we know about these? Um, velocity of P relative to the ground. What do we know about that one? Right. Right. And what do we know about this one? Well, this just comes from circular motion. Um, those circular motion equations, they always give you is the velocity or acceleration of some point on the circle, assuming that the center is fixed. So that's what, that's like the definition of velocity of P relative to the center, assuming the center is fixed. Any questions about that? Make sense out of that? Is that an instant from this point? Yes. Yeah, that's right. So the velocity of P relative to the center is omega cross R. Oh, and I didn't write this, but let's, uh, we need to give this a radius. So let's call this capital R. Uh, 
Um, if the so I didn't write these as vectors, I drew them with rotational directions. But how would these be represented as vectors? Yeah, right hand rule says uh, omega and alpha are both coming out. Uh, that's so is that positive or negative z? Positive z, yep. So I'm going to say that that omega vector, well, I, I mean, I guess the way I defined it already, the omega vector has to be uh, 0, 0, positive omega crossed with what's the r vector for that point P? Yeah, the, a negative capital R because yeah. the radius yeah. of the thing is capital R. That's exactly right. So that R vector goes from the center of the circular motion to the point you care about. So that's 0, negative R, 0. And so you get omega R, 0, 0. And so now take this and substitute it into uh, the relative motion equation. And you get that 0, 0, 0 is equal to omega r, 0, 0 plus um, the thing we're trying to calculate, b, c relative to g. And so V C relative to G, which is just the velocity of the center, is equal to negative omega R zero zero. Okay, so let's make sure the directions make sense. Um, so what that's saying is the center of that disk is moving in the negative x direction the way I drew it. Does that make sense? It's rotating like this. It's going to be rolling that way in the negative x direction. Okay. So in other words, uh, so i.e. the velocity of the center is negative omega r along the surface. And now let's figure out the acceleration. Uh, any questions? Did it give you the direction of the angular velocity? Okay. There's no standard then. Uh, you can just, it means you can choose one. Um, usually on problems like that, well, those problems can develop two possible ways like that. One is I just forget, forgot to give you a direction. Forgot to give you a direction. And then the second way is that uh, all that you have is centripetal accelerations, and the answer would be the same no matter which direction. Mm. Okay. Okay. Just choose one then. Okay. Okay, so now we want the acceleration of the center. Um, the acceleration of the point P relative to the ground is equal to the acceleration of the point P relative to the center plus the acceleration of the center relative to the ground. Uh, this is the one we want. This one is circular motion.
Um, and this one, uh, the parallel, the part parallel to the surface is zero. Okay, it still has a part that's perpendicular to the surface. But if you think about what a um, a circular disk does. center doesn't have any motion uh, perpendicular to the surface, right? It's not going up or down. And so we can do this and, and only deal with the parts that are parallel to the surface. Um, so um, uh, we want this. And it'll only only has um, a non-zero part parallel to the surface. So that means the fact that um, the fact that there's a part of the acceleration of p perpendicular to the surface, we can just ignore that. Okay. Um, so, uh, because of this, we're lucky and we can just ignore any parts of anything that are perpendicular to the surface. We can ignore any components perpendicular to the surface. So the acceleration of P relative to the ground that's parallel to the surface is equal to the acceleration of P relative to the center. That comes from circular motion, plus the acceleration of C relative to the ground. And now this we know is zero. This comes from circular motion. And this is what we want. Anybody have any questions about that reasoning? So now the circular motion part, the acceleration of P relative to the center um, and uh, I wasn't quite careful enough here. Um, this, we also are only dealing with the parallel part, right? This whole equation is just the part that's parallel to the surface. Okay, so this is going to be watermelon equation. And so that says zero, zero, alpha crossed with zero, negative R, zero, plus zero, zero, omega cross quantity zero, zero, omega cross zero, negative R, zero. The one in parentheses, uh, you get um, omega r zero zero. This one, you get alpha r zero zero. 
And so, positive, I think you get alpha r zero zero plus zero uh, omega squared r zero or alpha r. Um, omega squared r zero okay but we only care about the part that's perpendicular to the surface so which of those two parts is perpen we only care about the part that's parallel to the surface so which of those two is perpendicular omega squared r is perpendicular to the surface so this is just equal to alpha r zero zero. And so plug it back into the relative motion equation and you get zero zero. Uh, is equal to alpha r zero zero yeah. we only care about the part that's perpen that's parallel to the surface okay so in the relative motion equation so um, let's look at this one here. So we're going to take the part of the relative motion equation that's parallel to the surface because we know that the center of the circle is not going to be bouncing up and down. Okay? It's going parallel to the surface. So that's all we care about. And so um, that lets us throw away the only non-zero part of this. It means that when we calculate the thing using circular motion, we have to throw away the part of this that's perpendicular to the surface. Right. So we threw away the centripetal acceleration part and, and just kept the tangential acceleration part. Exactly. And plus the acceleration of C relative to ground, which is what we want. So the acceleration of C relative to the ground is equal to negative alpha R zero zero. And so, in other words, um, the acceleration of the center is alpha r, uh, negative alpha r, if um, parallel to the surface. Okay, so up until two years ago, I told people they had to be able to derive this, but it just sort of, people spent so much time on that, it was taking away from more important stuff, I felt like. So now just remember those formulas and just use them. But if you need to remind yourself about a sign or anything like that, the ideas in this derivation tell you what all the signs are and stuff. Yeah. And so this is true as long as your x-axis is, is parallel to the surface. No. No. This all do, also doesn't work for non-circular shapes. You know, like 
an ellipse could roll, but but this reasoning doesn't work for that because if an right the center's accelerating up and down. Shaved? Shaved. Oh. Like the square Yeah, it's it really just comes down to whether there's vertical movement of the center or not. Yeah, exactly. So so in those funky things where they have a have like a reverse parabola shape and a square wheel and the center doesn't move, it would work for that. But it, but if the center's going up and down at all, it wouldn't work. Any other questions about that? Okay, so now let's go through that bicycle problem. Um, does someone have that problem set? I'll take it. Number 17. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so a bicycle moves with a constant speed of 8.8 .8 meters per second. Uh, let's say it's going this way. Uh, each wheel has a radius of 0.34 meters. Um, and so first, uh, what's the velocity of a point at the top of the wheel? What's the velocity of a point at the bottom of the wheel? Well, that one's pretty easy. The bottom of the wheel? I was, I was doing that. <laughs> oh, okay. The bottom, and then uh, what's the acceleration vector of a point on the top? Okay, well this one is zero, so we don't have to worry about that one. All right. Well, what do we know? Uh, we know that the velocity of the center is negative omega r zero zero and uh, that's equal to well if I plug in the numbers that's negative eight point nope that's the velocity that's negative zero point three four that's r omega zero zero and that's equal to 8.800. 0, 0. And so omega is 8.8 .8 divided by 0. 0.34. Someone calculate that. Should be bigger. What? Oh, 25.9, yes. That's right. So uh, negative, negative 25.9, uh, that's radians per second. Um, now the velocity of the top relative to the ground is equal to the velocity of the top 
relative to the center plus the velocity of the center relative to the ground. Um, this we know. This is circular motion. So first, I'm going to do the circular motion one, the velocity of the top relative to the center is equal to the omega vector crossed with the r vector. And that's equal to um, omega is 0, 0, negative 25.9 crossed with, now what's the r vector? What? Uh, 0, yeah, the radius. 0, positive radius 0, because now we're looking at the top. So this is 0, positive 0.34. Zero and uh, you get eight point eight zero zero. And so now put that in the relative motion equation. And you get that the velocity of the top observed from the ground is equal to 8.800 plus the velocity of the center was also 8.800. So you get 19.600. <laughs> Didn't I just get, yeah. I just did the opposite of that last time? Yeah. Yeah, 19s and 17s are hard for me. Um, so uh, something that's rolling, the velocity at the bottom is always zero, and the velocity at the top of the wheel is always twice the velocity of the axle. In which step? Oh. Yeah, so uh, if, if the wheel is, so here's the wheel. Here's the coordinate system. If it's moving this way, the angular velocity is like that. No, you could do it moving to the left, too. Right. So do that, and you get your thumb pointing in the negative z direction. Is it um, Yeah. Uh, it isn't flipped in this case because when I was going through the derivation, the thing we were trying to solve for was uh, was this. So we had this max, the other term isolated. In this problem, what we're looking for is the thing on the left. So all we do is add up the other two terms. Yep. So in our other one, the r vector was 0, negative r is 0, because we were going from the center to the bottom of the circle. But this one's asking for the velocity at the top of the circle. So from the center to the point we care about is in the positive y direction.
so hard because it's, it's contact and it's brown. Mm -hmm. It loses whatever the density is there. Mm -hmm. It's not in contact. That's what it's yeah. Um, no, I don't think so. I think really relative motion is, is kind of the only way to make sense out of it I, to my head is just, you have something moving in a circle and you're superimposing that on top of the circle translating like this and, uh, at the bottom below the center, uh, the circular motion is causing a velocity that way that counteracts the thing's velocity this way. At the top, the circular motion does that, and it adds to the, at the top. So it just has to do with the fact that on a circle, at the top, the velocity is one way, and at the bottom, the velocity is the other way, I guess. But doing that calculation, or probably the acceleration calculation is what explains where the most mud flies off your tire, where you want to position your fenders, you know? You'd imagine wherever the acceleration is highest probably is where the most of the mud gets shaken loose. If any of you are thinking of going into a bicycle fender business. Do you want a bicycle fender? <laughs> I have them already, thanks. Yeah. Maybe I'll go in. Maybe best burnout fender Yeah. Um, okay, so now we're gonna calculate the acceleration. And we want the acceleration at the top. And the acceleration at the top relative to the ground is equal to the acceleration of the top relative to the center plus the acceleration of the center relative to the ground. Anything you see relative to the center, you're going to use the circular motion equations for. Uh, this one we know, and this is the one we want. Um, so the circular motion part. The acceleration is alpha cross r plus omega cross quantity omega cross r. Um, and that's equal to, oh, uh, in this problem, it said it's moving with a constant speed. So, Alpha is zero, just for this problem. So you got zero, 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 plus uh, omega is zero, zero, negative 25.9, crossed with the quantity zero, zero, negative 25.9, cross zero, point three four zero. So this one is uh, positive 8.8, 0, 0. And so the acceleration at the top is 0, 0, negative 25.9. Plus 8.8, 0, 0. Can someone calculate that? And then negative, right? 
uh, meters per second squared. Uh, and it's in the y direction. And positive. Yeah. So it's so for the y one, it's this times this. Minus this times this, and then negative all of it. Yeah. Negative negative. Uh, the y component always has to be the weird one. Yeah, right. You got to keep going with the negatives. Yeah. Negative, negative, negative. Mm -hmm. yeah, and yeah, uh, right. Intuitively, that's just a centripetal acceleration, so it has to be in the negative y direction. <laughs> yeah. Um, so put your fender there. All you need is a tiny little strip of fender this way at the top. <laughs> um, no. You're right. Okay. So now, yeah, so the acceleration of, wait, yeah, the acceleration of the top relative to the ground now is what we want, is equal to the acceleration of the top relative to the center plus the acceleration of the um, center relative to the ground. Um, the acceleration of the center relative to the ground, though, is negative alpha r zero zero. There's no alpha in this in this problem, so all you're left with is that centripetal acceleration. Oh. What do they say? I only have. Okay. So um, for D, the acceleration at the bottom of the wheel, um, the acceleration at the bottom is always just a centripetal acceleration. This is also just the centripetal acceleration. So in this case, the acceleration at the bottom would just be this, but in the opposite direction. Any questions about how that comes about? I mean, you shouldn't just say that, but that's, that's the reasoning. Go through it. Well, we're out of time is the problem. I could do it next time. Uh, but you use the same reasoning for that 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 you do here, you just have a different r, you know, different r vector, because you're going from the center to the bottom instead of the center to the top. So the, the approach is just the same as this. And then the last one uh, says, uh, what keeps us from, so we have the velocity vector, why don't we just take the derivative of that and get the acceleration vector? So the coordinate system, the wheel's rotating, but the coordinate system is not. Uh, it's just, you can think of it as just sitting there on the ground and the thing goes by. So that's not why. Yes. That's exactly right. Yeah. What we have there <clears throat> is a velocity at a single instant, you know? And, and so we don't know what this thing is doing as a function of time. And you can't, you can't just take the derivative. Like if you know something has a value of 14... Point six at a at a given instant, you can't just take the derivative of that and assume that the acceleration is zero, and that's what's going on here. Yes. Yeah. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. Yes, in my mind, that's how it works. Okay, uh, have fun playing in the snow. <laughs> <laughs>